Buy Agency Podcast with your host, Noah Ravoy. Good afternoon. As iron sharpens iron, so the face of one man sharpens another. And to rebuild the West, we must first rebuild ourselves. But to do that, we need the support of other men. We need to rebuild the male organization, the fraternity. Unfortunately, most men today are highly atomized, separated and alone more than ever before. We lack community and we especially lack brotherhood. The good news is that there are some men taking high agency action to rebuild these organizations and to build up their fellow man. One such man is my guest today, Zachary Small, the founder of Fraternity of Excellence. Welcome, Zachary. Thanks for having me, Noah. It's my pleasure. I've always always enjoyed speaking with you and reading your content. And I've heard a lot of good stuff uh, from members of Fraternity of Excellence. I've had clients that are also members of your fraternity. And I've hear, heard men describe how it's benefited them. And um, I really think it's something that is important to share and to, to let people know there are men taking action out there. No, absolutely. And honestly, that that is exactly what the world needs to hear. You know, it's so easy to get caught and look at what's not happening that you can overlook or maybe never hear of the good things that are happening. Exactly. And I think if you're not doing anything, um, it's it's very there's a tendency to complain that no one else is doing anything. And this is this is typical low agency behavior. And I honestly don't fault men too much for that, because that has been encouraged. You know, since they went to school, it's always wait till the teacher tells you it's okay. Wait till your parents say it's okay. Um, You know, don't don't go against the rules. Stand in line. When the bell rings, you move. Otherwise, you don't do anything. And we've been conditioned to wait for someone else to take the lead on everything. And now we have generations of men raised this way who aren't capable of taking the lead. And it's often, you know, it's often the guys that dropped out of college or high school, even I'm like myself, that are taking the lead in things because we got sick of the brainwashing and we got out before it killed our brain. And now we're helping to revive other men that suffered through this. Tell me a little bit about how Fraternity of Excellence is helping men to be better men. So to understand the fraternity, it's somewhat important to understand kind of where I'm coming from. So a a brief background that'll dive into answering that question. So growing up, I had a larger family. I have two brothers, a sister, I had many aunts and uncles. There was, it was always a group, a lot of coming together throughout uh, from third grade until I graduated high school, I played football. So again, I was surrounded by my bros, you know, it was a team. There was some camaraderie there, that brotherhood. After high school, I joined the Navy. So for eight years, I was with the Navy and the Marines, you know, working with, I was in the Navy, but I worked with the Marine Corps in my final three years. And again, camaraderie, brotherhood. And then I left the Navy to become a better father. Because I realized while I had a very successful career, you know, serving and doing what it is that I was doing, I could not be a great father and a great sailor. I was I was so focused on serving the mission. I volunteered for every deployment. Every time I could get away, it wasn't running from my family, but my mission. My, I was so focused on being the best sailor I could be for my country that it often came at the expense of my wife and my children. I wasn't there. And I, I made the decision, I want to be a good dad. That's the role I want to play. That's what I want to commit to. So I did. I got out after eight years, and that is where I I found a lack of camaraderie. For the first time in my life, I lost that brotherhood, and it wasn't the best. So I found my way to Reddit, kind of searching that. You know, where are the men? What what are men doing? How do you link up? What happens when you're alone? All these things that I think a lot of people go through. For some, it's after they graduate high school. They don't go to college, so they just start working, and maybe they start a family, and they're isolated. Maybe you go to college. You're on a team. You know, you play sports. And then you graduate and now you're isolated. Everybody sort of goes through that period where they lose the brotherhood. Well, the fraternity of excellence was this brainchild between Craig James and I to create this without the the, uh, shackles of proximity. Anybody across the globe can join this. You know, you've had clients from FOE, you know, and I, I think I know who you're talking about. And they're thousands and thousands of miles away from me. Yet I see that man weekly. Yet I know that man on a very personal level. We've broken bread together. It's crazy how technology has allowed brotherhood to to truly form. And that is something that I think separates FOE from many other groups is that they say, oh, you know, you can't you can't just uh, form that bond over electrons. I disagree. I think you can go all the way to forming that handshake. You can get that close to somebody knowing their background, 
learning how to be held accountable by that stranger who you meet, you share stories with, and all of a sudden that stranger is a friend. So in FOE, we're building that up. That tribe is coming together and it's, it's answering the call. Like you said, it's very easy. The whole world supports your mediocrity as a man. The whole world cheerleads it, if, if you will. They want your submission. But when you find someone who's going to hold you accountable, that'll change your whole life. And that's what we're offering. Absolutely. I, I love that holding accountable. You know, I've had other clients um, located in Europe as well who have been saying, you know, can I join from uh, Holland or can I join from wherever? And, you know, this, I said, wait, listen to the interview. Wait till the interview. We'll, we'll answer all those questions. But it's that the accountability part is very important. We're not made to develop in a vacuum. Um, every culture in history in their wisdom literature has said that don't isolate yourself. Isolating yourself destroys you. Caught in the Bible says it, it brings you a ruin. It ruins men when they're isolated because we start to get eccentric and weird and we start to deviate from what is normal or what is healthy anyway, not necessarily what's normal. And it takes other men to correct that. And, you know, historically, men spent most of their time with other men, even married men would have spent most of their time with the men they worked with, who were very often related to them, they would have been cousins, they would have been brothers, they would have been in the same trade, you know, your father would have taught all of his sons the same trade, probably you'd be working with your relatives. And so we had this system, which encouraged us to, to, as we aged up, we take responsibility for the younger ones coming in. And there was always this constant evolutionary hierarchy of men that would keep each other accountable. We don't have any of that nowadays. And, and you mentioned mediocrity. I think it's even worse. I think we're encouraged to shoot for the lowest possible denominator. I was you being know, generous. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't work out. Don't work out. Don't get strong because it's going to, it's going to make you a bad man. It's going to be, make you toxic. You know, don't, don't play anything competitive. It's going to make you toxic. You know, don't, uh, don't criticize anything except for the stuff we tell you to criticize because it'll make you toxic. And this is, this is holding men back. We have a whole generations of underdeveloped men. They're under socialized and underdeveloped. And the two things are very, very tightly connected. You know, it, when you bring that up, looking at the inter, uh, the generational passing on of lessons and that, that rite of passage to becoming your own man, think about how easy it is to justify your poor performance in your bubble. When it's just you, you're good. You're like, oh, it's okay that I'm putting on weight or it's okay that I'm saying this online or it's okay that you know I haven't been to the gym in six months. When you're around somebody though, those guys are going to hold you account. They're going to say, hey, dude, you're getting fat. You know, like men say things to men that you're not supposed to say. That's the whole boys locker room, the men's locker room. You know, having a friend who says, hey, I saw you say this on Twitter. What the hell are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense or, or whatever it is, you know, they will call you to the fire and all of a sudden, those things that could slide when you were by yourself, they don't slide anymore. And I love that. We had a, a, several new men join the fraternity recently. And, and one of the first things is somebody shared something and I, I immediately confronted him directly on it. And he was like, whoa, like I'm not used to that level. I was like, look, dude, I don't have time for the fluff. I don't have time for feelings. Like you're here for a reason. I want to help you. Well, let's get through all this garbage of like this dance we're doing and let's have a direct conversation like men do. And it's, it's an art that has been lost. Men don't have anybody to hold them accountable. They lose how to be held accountable. They lose that, mm. that connection that only men can offer. Yeah, I hear a lot of complaint about, oh, there's not enough leadership in the world. There's not enough men taking lead. There's also almost no men that know how to follow a good leader as well. And if you have no followers, how do you inspire a man to lead? You know, if, if a man has the capacity to lead and he looks and he goes, I don't want to lead any of these people. You know, that you're not going to get leaders stepping up. It's, maybe it's not that there isn't leaders. It's just that there's not enough quality followers to give them the incentive to say, OK, I'm, I'm going to lead. And there are some men, of course, that will, will lead. And I think we're going to do it in a kind of a, a ripple effect. We have an effect on the people that we directly connect with. They have an effect on the people they connect with. And this network ripple will go out into the world. And this is how we change the world. It's not going to be on a top down you know, we're, we're going to take over the government or we're going to take over some institutions. It's going to be man to man that we build each other up. And only then are we even worthy of taking over institutions and, you know, imposing some sort of order and organization and structure on the world, which the world desperately needs. 
desperately needs the leadership of men. No, I, I completely agree. And when you look at it from that lens of the the uh, the ripples that are going out, the vibrations you're sending out, first off, we'll never know how many people we've impacted, and it doesn't matter. What does matter is knowing that you're going in the right direction, that you're taking, you're embodying the message that you're putting out there. A lot of people, I recently wrote a piece on uh, self-esteem and confidence. So this is, this is fresh. <laughs> they don't have any sense of self-worth. So when that gap is presented or there's a void in leadership, they never think, oh, I could fill that and make this better. Or I could step up and actually change the direction of this because there is no I in their head. They're just some worthless being. They're not an I of like, I have a foundation. I am a man. I have standards. That doesn't exist in many. They're like an amoeba. They're just existing. You know, and when you look at that, especially for families, these people talk about, oh, we'll take over the government. Dude, you, you, you are uncomfortable telling your wife no. How do you think you're going to go take over this government? Like, if you can't get the first step right, how are you going to get to the next mile right? Yeah, it's the reason your wife is shit testing you. You're talking about taking over the government. She's like, okay, I'm going to do my part to help you by shit testing you to see if you can even, you know, take over the family. If you can't take over the family, where are you going to go from there? And, you know, we don't like it. We don't, you know, tests are not pleasurable necessarily, but they're absolutely essential. What they produce is essential. And we're a lot, it's a lot better to be tested amongst a group of men that actually care about us than to get tested by the real world. Because the real world has no chill. It has no mercy. It, it'll, it'll completely crush you. And it's not trying to teach you a lesson. It's trying to kill you. Your friends are trying to teach you a lesson. They're trying to make you stronger in the end. And, you know, you mentioned a, a man will say to another man, hey, you're getting kind of fat. And when a man says to a man, you are deficient in some way, and they're both healthy individuals, and they understand the, the proper dynamics between men, the other guy says, he takes that as an expression of love and concern from a brother. And he says, oh, man, I must do something about this. I'm letting the group down. I got to do something about this. And this is a big part of the reason why men in groups rapidly progress. The progression, the maturity that you develop from being in a group. And, you know, this can happen if you're in the military. Um, I've seen a lot of men, you know, you see these 21-year-old guys and they, they sound like they're 50. You know, they, they talk like they're 50 and you know, they've got some leadership skills already because they've been in there for two or three years, you know. You don't see this happening with men that live essentially like children their entire life. And there are men, there are men who are in their 40s who are married for years, for decades, and they're still behaving as children. Their wife legitimately can say, I've got whatever number of children and then my husband to look after. And that's that's sad. That's terrible. If you're a man in that situation, though, it's not unfixable. But you're not going to fix it on your own. You need other men. And I think that point of intent it's important that we kind of circle back on that, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I, I don't think people truly appreciate the the strength or the um, the benefit of having somebody in your life who will say the thing you don't want to hear, but they're saying it to help you. And yeah. think about it. If you're on a highway and there's a brick wall, you know, three miles and you're cruising, everybody's like, yeah, keep going. No, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. And there's we all know there's a brick wall, but they want to cheerlead you. They don't want to tell you no. You got that one friend who's like, dude, get off. Hey, take a right or left or brakes. And you're like, no, shut up. I can drive. You get mad at the one person who's telling you the truth, but you're going to hit that brick wall. And what's what's the win there? You know, for myself, whether it was uh, alcohol, that's a great a recent example. Somebody's like, hey, dude, you got to dial that in. Like, you're going crazy with that. And I was like, damn it. Like, who are you? I'm a man. I could... That's the only person who spoke up and helped me because I was heading towards a brick wall. I was going to destroy my life's work and just burn myself out. Why was it only one person though? Why was only one person able to have that confrontation with me? Because they would rather lose me as a friend and have me angry if that meant helping me. The intent was there for my betterment. Which is actual love. Love is when you're willing to lose the person if it's beneficial to them. You know, it's it's uh it's different than you are you serve a utility value to me and so I'm going to keep you happy until you stop serving that utility value. That's not love. And that's the kind of relationships most people have in their life. They don't have any actual close brotherhood, anyone that that would rather tell them that honest truth and risk losing them than than uh, you know than see them suffer and, and in pain. And when you don't have those kind of relationships, you also tend not to be that kind of person to others. And it's uh, it's really sad. So many people are suffering with that. 
One, one thing that I think is um, a lot of men think of when they think of fraternities or men's groups is they're thinking of these groups from like the 80s and 90s where a bunch of um, kind of effeminate soft men would get together and sit in a circle and talk about their feelings and you know how their mother didn't love them and how they weren't getting any sex from their wife and they would basically it, it, it was a emotional cry session and that's absolutely not what a healthy masculine fraternity is that is not how men should interact with each other um how is it that you guys interact with each other that you you know you structure your 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 perhaps your meetings or your sessions with how do you do that so we have a a code of honor that all men have to follow and this goes to your point on being willing to lose people we've enforced that code of honor so if you join the fraternity of excellence there's a certain expectation placed on you you're going to be honest you're going to respect the other men that are in there and you're going to be doing the work necessary we have had to kick people out because month after month after month the same problems were remaining and instead of saying yeah keep on paying keep on paying people love to say oh why would i pay for this look we don't want your money you're a bad representation of this group i need men who look and act and and are and embody the part of what we're trying to build in society so that that is a part of how we structure like how you're supposed to uh, conduct yourself in the meetings though it, we have this running joke that on social media you see this highlight reel of people's greatest successes and you see you know all these amazing things they're doing but you know those person are, people are sad you know like they're they have a void in their soul you might have seen them that day they were crying about how much they hate their kids but on their on their facebook it's look at us we did finger painting today you're like oh my god you're this is fake in foe we're a dumpster fire if you look at it compared to facebook or twitter because the men are like hey i'm working on this what do i do and other men will roll in they'll offer their guidance and then somebody else i'm working on that we share honest you know transparent truths into our lives because the only way we can help men is if we know where they're struggling so yeah. the stuff you're not supposed to say we strongly encourage you say it that way we can help you with it and, and to the man that i was direct with that that was one of those situations he was kind of talking about this and this and i was like no we need to face that why aren't we talking about that he's like oh shit. you know I, i've never been a part of a group that was so honest I was like, dude, we don't have enough. To, we've got to undo years of work in days, man. We got to like hit the ground running, get you working on you. And that rapid growth you spoke about earlier, it's a real thing. It is insane. You know, and, and the word insane has been bastardized, but it truly is incomprehensible the amount of growth people have in such a rapid window when they're ready to execute and they're actually ready to do the work. Now, I think I want the, the viewers to notice that you used a series of action words. Men say, I'm working on this. This is something I'm trying to do. And then other men come in and give guidance. Guidance is an active thing. You don't, you don't, you, uh, you know, you're not talking about your feelings. You're actively guiding, directing, and, you know, feelings are an important part of that because emotions give you motivations and give you, um, they help to direct your, your psyche of where you're going. But it's all about action, getting stuff done, accomplishing things and doing things in your life. And this is really what, you know, there's a lot of men that, you people say oh you, this guy needs therapy you don't need therapy you need other men you know you're not broken you're directionless you're rudderless and you're rudderless because you have no point to navigate from you know you're a sailor so you know how navigation works you can't have a point you have points and then you triangulate your position and then you need a map to figure out where you're going to go and a lot of men they're sailing blind in an ocean in the dark with no skills. And this is a massive, massive problem that you cannot solve on your own. And you can't read a book that'll fix it for you. And you can't watch a YouTube video that'll fix it for you. You need direct feedback from other men and you need that accountability. Otherwise, you're just going to, you know, you might fix one of those problems, but you're not going to get those multiple points of reference that you need without other men. So I had to make a note on that. You said triangulate. We're looking at three, at least three points. Yep. mind, body, spirit. I don't think it's a coincidence that you need three points to get where it is you want to go to ensure you, you have the right references. But also when we talk about this, I, I want to clarify now, it's not get back to smoking cigars, shooting your guns and growing your beard. Though those are great things. Those are what men do. It's, it's a male dominated area, but that doesn't make the man the man. We talk about your mind. What's going on up here? That confidence, that irrational confidence being able to connect, being able to confront, you know, the body, 
if you're carrying extra weight, if your hormones are jacked up, you're not optimized. So every, your, your spirit and mind will still suffer. We have men working on that, you know, and then your soul, your place in this world, be it your faith or be it your connection to your fellow man. All of those need to be strong. All of those get a focus. This isn't just, you know, let's build big muscles and send guys out there. I'm alpha, bro. Like that's not the thing, but I love people love to, to discredit us by spinning it so far in that direction that they forget we're building great husbands. We're building great fathers. We're building men who are, are now able to connect with their family and make that relationship so much better than it was. It's not just about shooting guns and drinking whiskey, you know, and, and loose women and fast cars, whatever it is. You know, it's about the optimized man on his foundation, building the best him that can be. And when you do that, then you're, the wife is going to have the best husband. Society is going to have the, the strongest example. Children are going to have the best, you know, uh, mold to follow and to build themselves upon. It's so much more than just these cheap, trivial things that people throw out there. But it's so easy for them to do that because it deflects the responsibility that's placed on their shoulders to follow suit. Yeah, the foundation of society is stable men. And we lack stable men, therefore we lack a stable society. And organizations like what you've created are creating the environment in which men can become stable. They can become strong and stable. And you know, you're not going to fix every man out there, but that ripple effect we, we can't underestimate that ripple effect, what it has. And there will be people who say, hey, I, I love this idea. I want to create my own fraternity or I love this idea. I want to create a chapter of this over here or I want to I want to join even though I'm you know in Japan or something. And that ripple effect from these men becoming more stable and stabilizing the men around them at minimum. After being in a fraternity, a good fraternity, you start to have a very high level of what you expect from your friends. So you start being the one who leads and holds men accountable close to you because you will start to crave uh, close contacts as well. You'll, wanna, you'll start to have, want to have men in your vicinity to get together with on a regular basis and that you can, you know, you can physically go and work out with or whatever you want to do. And this is the ripple effect. This is how you really can change the world by changing a handful of select men. Um, out of interest, roughly how many men are in the Fraternity of Excellence? We're closing in on 200 or, or just yeah. shy. That's that's a lot of men. I, I, that's actually more than I was uh, was expecting. Yeah, and I, I know that recently you're starting to actually increase the, the qualifications. You're increasing the cost and you're, you're starting to be very selective about how, who you let in. And that's, you know, as Groucho Marx said, I don't want to belong to any organization that would let me join. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, is, uh, it is not worth joining an organization that is promiscuous, you know, that will, oh, we don't have any qualifications. You can just, you know, pay your, pay your money and, and saddle up. Um, that's not worth joining because any organization like that will very quickly be pulled down to the lowest common denominator. The organization that has, uh, especially when it comes to members that are actually having an effect on the direction of the organization, if those members are handpicked, are carefully chosen, are vetted and are held to a high standard over time, um, then you actually have an organization that people crave to join. And I think a lot of men are, they have this craving to be in a fraternity, that, to be with other men, to, to join a group like this. But they also have some fears as well. You know, um, I think a lot of men have a fear that their, their, their Walter Mitty life is going to come crashing down. I don't know if you know who that is. Nope. <laughs> no, so there was, I'm not there was, though. I was, I was going to support you blindly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a story about a guy who uh, I, I think he was like um, very low uh, office job in in the military, but he had delusions of grandeur constantly, and his whole life revolved around his delusions instead of actually going out and taking opportunities he could have really taken in real life. And so, a lot of men they're they're concerned with will my they know they have a false image of who they are. Will that bubble be popped? And it's a lot scarier in thinking about it than it is actually having it happen. When it actually happens, you join a group and you start getting that sharpening, one man sharpening the other. It's not a painful process as you think. It's not as, it's uncomfortable at first if you're not used to it. But it's pretty soon you start to crave it. Well, when you look at that too, you know, doing uncomfortable things and sort of finding your way when you're so used to having it squared away, you're so used to your comfortable spot and position in life. Uh, a recent example 
is I've never been hunting. So I'm 33 years old and I'd never been hunting. It's one of those things where I felt like I was really lacking. You know, that's something that I think men should do. I think at least take part in, it may not be your, your staple. You may not always do it, but you should know how to do it and have done it. So one of the men in FOE had a cabin and another man in FOE said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be going up there hunting. And I was like, let's do this. So there was four FOE men. I went on my first hunting trip and me, I've been leading the way, doing this thing, crushing it in life, you know, an FOE, you know, making sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. I was the novice. Hmm. All of them had been hunting before. So I was the new guy and I was very, I was comfortable with that. I was like, okay, I'm not going to, I've learned along the way throughout my, my days is, is that when you don't know something, that's okay. You're not an inferior man for not knowing everything in the world. Pay attention to the person who knows what they're doing. Keep your mouth shut. Ask questions only when you have actual questions that are relevant and then just follow and do as you're told. You need to be able to just follow as well as lead. And I think these men, they're, they're in this spot that they, they don't want to lead because that's responsibility and being pushed. And they're afraid to follow because that's going to force them to take action. So they're, they're being pushed out of the comfort zone in two ways. So mentally, they're being told, all right, you've got to start taking responsibility. You've got to start pushing yourself to do more and you know act like a man and not a child. And then physically, oh, you've got to actually literally go into the world and take these actions. You've got to go do things. When you're used to that, like I said, when I was in that position, and that was last weekend, I was I was comfortable because I'd done this before. You know, it's time and again I put myself in these spots of either leading or following, leading or following. You know, and here it was no different for me. But for men who are in such a uh, they're conditioned to their comfortable lifestyle, any change like that is super uncomfortable. But I'll tell you. Looking back, I'm so proud. Like, I finally checked that box, man. I'm like, yeah, you know, these men will never feel that sense of pride. They're they're robbing themselves of that growth and that, you know, I, I want to say just a life experience. Like, you're, they're not even living. They're just sort of existing until they die, taking the scraps that are thrown their way. And how unfortunate it is to live a life like that and call yourself a man. How unfortunate it is for a, a woman to look at that and be like, I guess that's my husband. I, I don't know, maybe another child. I don't know. <laughs> There's this guy I live with. And then the kids. They're supposed to be looking to you with that, that those big eyes, like, yeah, my dad is Superman. My dad is going out and living it. He's a hero. And you you sort of rob them of even that because they know it. Kids eventually see, like, all these dads are doing stuff. You're not. What? You know, objectively, they're going to start to see maybe my dad isn't the best. And what a, what a shame that would be. Yeah, and I think one of the big things about having a group of competent men around you is that your sons and daughters, uh, especially for your sons, they can look and say, okay, my father is masculine and he's got his areas of competence. He's got friends who are masculine. They have sometimes different areas of competence. There are different ways to be a masculine man that are all complementary and overlap each other and together make a stronger group than individually. And so they may not... They may not um, take exactly after their father and want be interested in the same things as their father. Maybe they're interested in some of the things that one of their father's friends are interested in. Or, you know, he, one of their father's friends can mentor them in a subject that the father is not as competent on. You know, there are, there are some very masculine men that just aren't good at fixing stuff. Maybe the son, he wants to know how to fix things. And hey, I, I, my, my, my good friend here, he's going to show you how to, how to fix this uh, radio or whatever. And my son's benefited a lot from seeing me around other masculine men and learning how we interact with each other and also seeing that there are different ways to approach situations that are all masculine and all correct ways uh, of, of solving problems. And there are different interests that men have and that there's, there's not just this one rigid thing that you have to do to be a man. Like you said, uh, you know, must smoke cigars, drive fast cars, uh, bang a lot of women and whatever it happens to be, you know, uh, there's, there's other ways too of expressing your masculinity that are actual masculinity, not these new non-toxic ways, but they're, they're actual masculinity. And this helps, um, it also helps your daughter, daughters to understand, uh, more about what it means to be a man. So they know what kind of men they're looking for in a world, which right now, you know, men actually hide their masculinity when they go out. They try to appear less offensive. You know, I, I, I grew a bigger beard on purpose because uh, <laughs> I can't wear a mask with a big beard anyway. I wouldn't wear the mask anyway, but you can't wear the mask. And, and it makes me stand out a little bit. And when I, when I walk around, um, it, it's kind of like a, it's a signal. I don't have to conform to anybody's dress code. 
I can go out and I don't have to conform to anybody's dress code. And this, you know, it, it changes how people interact with you when you, when you behave that way. And that is, uh, you know, it was great going out with a bunch of other guys uh, a few weeks back, had some friends visiting and none of us would wear a mask everywhere we'd go. It'd be like the people come up that are responsible guards or whatever. Got to put the mask on. We're like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whatever, whatever. And we, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get to it eventually. And, you know, in a group like that and seeing that happen, now my son says, oh, okay, you're not the only crazy man that doesn't want to wear a mask. <laughs> you, you're right, dad. Yeah, this must be, you know, you're, you, you're right on, on, uh, on, on point here with this. And it's great for your kids to see that so that, you know, all children will eventually question the choices their parents have made. And the broader an example of healthy behaviors that they can see, the easier it is for them to place your behaviors within that healthy spectrum. And it's a, it really helps being a parent. We're, we're not meant to be a parent in a vacuum. We're meant to be a parent in a community of other parents. I, I absolutely agree. You know, and I, we would fit right in because I'm like, hey, I'll get to that mask later. And right now I got the organic filter. But when you look at it, you know, the men who are, are going out there, or the, let's look at the men in the FOE. Not only do they have this access to this group of men who make them not feel so crazy, but when they come in and there's this sense of being allowed to be who you are, it's like taking a pack off. It's like, you know, washing the makeup. You've been looking like a clown for so long because you keep trying to put on the smile and I'm not offensive. I'm not toxic. You go in FOE and we're like, dude, we don't, I want you, whatever that is, that authentic you, not the, the prim and politically correct you. And the, the transformation that happens when they're just allowed to speak freely, it's like their balls dropped. It's like their voice, you know, puberty hits immediately. They're like, oh, I can, I'm allowed to be me again. That's great. I can make these jokes and I can say these direct things. I don't have to worry about feelings. It's, it's incredible how fast that happens. And again, when we look at families, you know, this man, he may not tell his wife and children that, oh, these guys, all of a sudden, he's just a guy who has answers. You don't need to tell them, hey, that guy taught me how to fix this thing that I just fixed in the house. And that guy taught me how to be more confident. You just start being it and living it. And all of a sudden, your family, they know you joined a group, but all of a sudden, you're just so much better. And they don't know that you're getting direct coaching on this. All they know is you, you are there. You're confident. You're building a new energy. You're having fun. You know, these are all great things that these men embody. And then when the meetups happen, and I'm really looking forward to the day we can shake hands and officially, you know, consummate the friendship. But you'll see, you know, last 21 convention, I think there were 15 of us. So 15 FOE dudes, and we're, we were a group inside the larger group. So there was the 21 convention, but in FOE, we all kind of just went together. And when we went to the Brazilian steakhouse, if you will, all of us are just openly speaking, you know, eye contact, body language. You could just read like these dudes are on. And why? Why are these guys like this? I'm not like that. Or who are they? Or what group are they a part of? People start looking at why are you guys different? Why are you loud and confident when everybody else is supposed to be quiet and meek? It's a beautiful thing to see. And I've got a few guys here in Rhode Island that are from FOE and we'll link up, we'll meet up, but it does remind you that you're not crazy. <laughs> you know, like sometimes the men by themselves who are truly like leader, they, they have that type A personality. They start to look around and you have so many examples of, of repression of self that you start to wonder like, mm. maybe I am the asshole. Like maybe I'm the one with the problem until you find another group. You're like, all right, normal, healthy dudes are like me. You know, I'm not the issue. They are, and we got to fix it. Yeah, you mentioned that being open and talking to people and, you know, I want to hear all, I want to hear, have who you really are. There's, there are conversations we shouldn't have with our wives. You know, there are things we shouldn't talk to them about because women are emotional amplifiers. And if we talk about things that are disturbing to us that we need to talk about, um, that's going to, you know, they're, they're going to amplify that. They're going to turn our level four up to a level eight or a 10 and they're, they're going to be a blow up and it'll create excessive stress in them. And, you know, I always tell men not to black pill their wife. Don't black pill your wife. Don't talk about negative things with her. Um, that's, that's not healthy for either of you, but you need someone to talk about it with. And a lot of men don't have that. They don't have someone to come along and go, man, I'm frustrated with this thing and that I'm doing at work or, you know, uh, how my business is uh, COVID hit me hard or whatever it happens to be, or just, you know, disappointments in politics or whatever it happens to be. And going out and being able to talk to other men about that and not being babied. Part of the reason you don't want to talk to your wife about some of these things is 
Um, she doesn't want to hear him. And the second thing is, is that if she does hear him, she's either going to baby you. Now if she's babying you. She's not going to be attracted to you anymore. She's going to look at you like a child or she's going to react negatively to it, in which case she's not going to want to have more conversations. You're going to start having uh, a lot of negative conversations. You go talk to a bunch of men about it and they're like, okay, you have a problem. We have solutions. We're men. That's what we do. And they're going to start, you know, peppering you with potential solutions. Very often we get so close to our own problems that we can't see the solution. We need someone to break us out of that bubble, to get us out of that uh, negative cycle that we're stuck in. And that's what a big part of why we talk to each other about our problems. You know, men assume if a woman comes to us with a problem, we want it solved because that's what we do with other men. And that's one of the huge benefits that you get being around other men is that you don't have that many problems anymore. They start getting solved. Not because the men are doing anything for you. They're not solving your problems for you, but they're breaking you out of your your hopeless cycle of, of thinking about your problem and not thinking about the solutions. You know, also, as we mentioned before, that the skill set of the group is way better, way, way broader than anything that you can bring to a problem. So you're bringing this now to this, this brain trust of men and you're saying, I got this problem almost for sure out of 200 men, somebody will have faced that problem at some point and kicked its ass. And he's going to be able to tell you how to do it. And now you're going to be able to do what he did and be successful. We're reinventing the wheel all the time because we're alone. And we're frustrated that our progress in life is slow because we're alone. And we join a group, everything speeds up. When you look at it too, the, the input from a day, you know, I'm going to say something and it's probably going to be taken <laughs> to oblivion, but diversity is our strength. <laughs> you know, and I know that's pushed in the wrong meanings, but in this meeting, these men are coming from such different walks of life. We've got single men. We've got a 20-year-old. We've got a 50-plus-year-old. We've got everything in between. Uh, single, new new fathers, grandfathers, divorced men, married men. You, you want to talk about the, the diversity of backgrounds that we have and input? That brings so many different tools. And you, you might be sitting there. You, I've got a hammer and a screwdriver. But, dude, you need a saw. But you've never experienced that. And you've never gone through it. So you don't even know what a, how to use a saw in this situation. Well, this dude comes over. He's like, hey, man, I was in your shoes and I tried using the hammer and the screwdriver. You know what? Try this out. Try this tool. Maybe it's talking to your wife differently. Maybe it's instead of, you know, uh, enforcing, you know, these boundaries with your children, you allow a certain leniency to show them that sometimes you can push. Sometimes, you know, the higher priority is less the, big techs in the chat. No, it's to give a shout out to. There are there are guys in there, though. They give you different tools that you might not have thought of on your own. And their life experiences allow you to avoid the hole they fell in. So sometimes you're trying to climb out of that hole. Sometimes we're like, whoa, hey, if you keep doing this, you're going to end up there. <laughs> well, don't yeah. do that. There's, there's quicksand there. <laughs> Let's go left here. You know, it's like getting off the highway. You have that opportunity that we don't really have elders in tribes anymore. We don't really have, you know, that, that, that council that we can turn to. And in FOE, we've brought that back. You know, it's, it's so funny. I like, as you're saying these things, I'm going through examples of it happening. And one of the guys, he was talking about all his problems and somebody else came in. He's like, all right, we'll try this, 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 this complain, complain, complain. Another guy, try this, this, he complained again. And somebody finally swooped in. They're like, dude, all you're doing is talking about your freaking issues. Go apply this. Don't say another freaking word until you've tried these solutions to these problems. The guy came back. I think it was a few days later. Thanks, man. It worked. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, let's stop talking about it. Go fix it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that council of elders that you mentioned, you know, the first thing that or one of the first things I ask men, especially younger men that come uh, for coaching to me is I'll say to them, why don't you go and ask your dad these questions? And, and I know there's a reason because if they could ask their father, they would, and they'd save money. So the thing is, is that most fathers today, you know, most men have either no father or a father who's incompetent or a father who doesn't know anything more than they know because they were raised poorly too. You know, we're now into multiple generations of men being raised without a clue. And out of 200 people, though, someone's going to have a clue. Somebody's going to have a clue in that group of what to do. Someone's going to know and someone's going to be able to help you. Um, you know, it's, it's way better than having a father. It's like having 200 fathers and brothers. And this is, I mean, the, the, the amount, the tiny amount that you pay to be in a group like this to demonstrate your commitment to the group and to contribute to the group's commons uh, doesn't begin to to um, 
equal the huge value you get out of it having access to those kind of people imagine you had to go you know imagine instead of becoming a member of the group you had to pay these men for their advice dude <laughs> most of them you probably couldn't because they literally wouldn't care honestly though the 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 the, the, the individuals that are bringing their skill sets to this if they were to charge these men who are getting their advice what they charge their one-on-one -on -one coaching it is astronomical the amount of money because you go into this group and, and people love to bring up the price. Oh, I've got to pay for friendship. You're not paying for friendship, man. Like you're paying for access to a gated digital community. You're gaining access, direct access to subject matter experts on every aspect of life from manufacturing to, to relationships, literal experts who do this for a living and everything in between, whether it's sales, con we have content creators, We've got, I'm not even going to name drop. We've got a lot of names in there of people everybody would recognize who are mixing it up because they're looking to improve a different area of their life. So whether you're trying to make money, you're trying to fix your marriage or improve your relationship with your children, or again, find that intestinal fortitude you lost, you have a group that'll help you foster that in yourself. And if, if, if you're going to spend a hundred bucks on booze each month and not blink an eye, how could you not find access to that for 30 days? You know, it's even cheaper if you go for the year, one year of this. My God, the, the, what you can do, what I've seen happen, it is literally life-changing, not figuratively. It literally changes the entire trajectory of the generations to follow you. It's incredible. Yeah. And you know, you guys have created your own commons. You've created your own community, your own commons. There is, um, you know, relationships are valuable. Relationships have value. You've created that. And if someone wants to come into that, who's contributed nothing and have access to all of that value them contributing a few bucks. I mean, that's the minimum you can do. Even then you should be thankful for being allowed into a group like that. Uh, there are, there are other groups for the elites do this. You know, what you're doing is you're bringing this back down to average men being able to do this to, to normal um, regular men. Whereas the elites, they always have their little groups. They have their Davros, they have their um, organizations, their, their, their Bohemian Groves and other things. They have their places they go where they have their own sometimes multi-generational communities there where they help each other out and they watch each other's back and they keep each other rich and they keep each other in power. And we have been discouraged from doing this intentionally. I believe this is part of the undermining of Western men's agency was separating us. And COVID is just taking it up to one level more. Now you're, you know, you're social isolated, socially isolated, put a mask on so no one can see your face. Don't talk to anybody, stay six feet apart. And this is the pushback to this. You know, a lot of people say, well, uh, we, have, we, have to, we have to fight, fight what the government is doing to us. Okay, here's something you can do. You can join a fraternity. Uh, no, I, I want to fight. <laughs> I want to fight if there's a good chance I'll get killed. It's really, they don't want to fight. They're just, they're tired of all the pain they're in, but they don't want to do anything to get out of it. And you've offered them, you've said, hey, look, I did all the work. You you and and and, it's, and your, the other founder is... Um, Craig James. Craig James. You and Craig James you did all the work. You created it. You brought in all the men. All you got to do is pay a little, spend a little bit of money and you get into and, and, and qualify and actually improve your life. You know, this is a fantastic deal for men. You know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to convince myself as well, I think <laughs> to join. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it is, um, it is important for men to be in these groups. And I think if you are in a group already and you're thinking, Hey, I love this, but my group's not doing that. Join anyway. You can be in more than one group. Join anyway and take that great spirit back to your group. That, that amplifies the ripple effect. So let that ripple effect ripple out to other groups. Maybe you're part of an informal local group of men that hang out together, but you're not holding each other accountable. You're not setting that good example of leading and following. So join Fraternity of Excellence. Learn how to do that. Take those skills back to your group. Maybe you bring them along as well. And that's you know, it's, it's that kind of ripple effect we're going to use to change the world. Yeah. And when I look at it, you know, FOE, it's not a halfway house where, where we take those who aren't ready. Like you join FOE when you're ready, you know, when you've had enough, when you've hit that wall and you start seeing like, well, these guys, and you, you, you brought up uh, COVID, you know, and the things going on and how to push back and fight against this. Do you know how we're fighting against this? We are the most stable of men during this. During 2020 and this entire Corona COVID situation of, of lockdowns, 
of layoffs, everything, we have been stronger. It's a part of the reason we made the changes we made because people started really coming into the door and I didn't like the rate that was happening. You know, we had a lot of guys and I'm like, we got to maintain our, our organic growth. You know, we can see down the line, like this is only going to accelerate. So let's try to control the, the masses that are trying to get in. You know, we want men who are ready to do the work. And when you were bringing up, you know, the intentional nature of how they separated men, this surgical precision has been so impressive with how they've gotten in and broken men down. I mean, with a scalpel, they, they have broken us from the inside out. And over years, it's incredible how efficient they've been at it with marketing, with, with uh, laws, with just every aspect of what it is to be a man. And FOE is like totally disregarded that. When everybody's running worried, you don't see me posting a bunch of uh, political outrage things. I'm talking about men, you know, you really need to dial yourselves in. I, I don't believe in this whole apocalypse, you know, it's hitting the fan. Because if it does, well, we're squared away. There's no need for me to go out there and start ranting and raving because that's slacktivism. That's just me slapping a keyboard. The only time I bring anything up like that in the political spectrum is to get other people aware that they're doing it to bring them back down a level so they can calm down. Hey, what actions can you take? Who can you connect? Instead of writing 1,500 words about how this is bad and the election was a fraud, spend 1,500 minutes talking to your neighbors. Spend 1,500 hours on yourself and growing your family and developing the skill sets you guys need to have to survive in an environment that may be less than optimal. You know, if, if there is total collapse headed our way, we are so far behind the curve now that nothing you do online is going to change. You need to do it in the real world. Well, having that network is a part of that. I have a group of people I can tap into who are working in different, you know, fields and environments that can give me a heads up, that can help me make better decisions when I'm purchasing certain products, that can allow me to, to make transfers uh, monetarily, to put it in the best position to help myself. You know, there are a lot of things going on that help you win. And it has nothing to do with going out in public and just yelling at the clouds. You know, there, you've got to do actual action. And we did that work in 2018, 2019. We were fine in 2020. That was like game time. It was time to go play. Well, all that practice we put in, we were ready. Let's play. Let's go on the field. And guess what? My family was fine. The men inside, their families were fine. Their wives, the, as they got stressed out, they immediately were, were quenched. You know, they were immediately satisfied. But hey, I got it. The man was strong. The man was the rock. You know, we didn't get pulled into these winds of just total chaos and losing ourselves. And it was a beautiful thing to see because every time I looked around, I was like, yeah, that's an FOE guy. Just a totally normal post. While everybody else is like freaking out about Trump or Biden. He's like, hey, make sure that you get your macros in today. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I think a lot of times the focus on external things over which we really have little control is just an excuse not to focus on the things um, that we need to actually control in our life, the things we have actual power over. Uh, you know, you, you'll see this. Uh, they don't really care if we protest. You know, the elites don't care about protests. There are there is a certain point at which they start to resist because they realize men are getting real serious about stuff. Um, but before that, they don't really care. They want you to you know waste energy yelling at the clouds. They want you to do that. What they don't want you to do is to actually form real bonds with other men and organizations which they don't control. We've had a slow creep over the last 100 years of the state becoming the only social organization. All social welfare handled through the state, all connections through the state. I mean, we're, we're gonna get at a point where the state assigns you a job and then a wife and you know that's it's gonna be the future if, if this was to continue. And we are, you know, men like what you're doing, what I'm doing with my friends, we're going around that. We're saying, don't, don't like your system. Don't think I can fix it. I'm going to make my own and creating our own parallel systems, our own parallel support networks. You know, if, if you are in trouble, I'm sure the first thing you don't think about is what government agency can I phone to save me <laughs> from my problem? <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, how can I fix it myself? And if I can't, who in my network has the answers to these questions? And once we start to do that, when we don't need them anymore, and they're, you know, the governments will always be unstable and we don't need them. When they fluctuate, when they're off, so to speak, when they're not working, all those who did rely on them are going to suffer. And all those who didn't, they're going to just take territory and take and grow, you know, and it's, it's something that um, the people who are concentrating on outrage are never going to, to get. They're never going to get that growth because they're wasting their energy in the wrong place. And honestly, there's this sense of needing to appear to be successful. 
needing to appear to be on the right side. And I'm not focused on any of that. And people may have this view of me as to where I stand or don't stand. And their perception is off because my aim is not to appear to be anything to them. My aim is to just be that thing. I am squared away. I am grounded. I am making my moves, but that's not for the world to know. <laughs> that's not, I don't need to go out and stamp my feet and for what I believe in, you know, for the sake of just saying it. Cause I know there's, there's literally how many accounts on social media just saying the same thing and slamming the keyboard. How many of them are actually living it though? And that's where I place my focus. And that's where I place my focus with the FOE men and they keep me accountable as well. You know, we remain focused on, on living it, not just talking it. It's acting on verba, which is deeds, not words. And earlier you brought up, you know, iron sharpening iron. The chemical symbol for iron is FE, fraternity of excellence. You know, this, it's all coming together, man. It all makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, someone, someone mentioned here, um, said fraternity of excellence are warriors in the arena. And I think it was um, uh, Theodore Roosevelt that talked about, you know, don't criticize the man in the arena um, from the sidelines. You know, he's the one that's actually there taking the blows, taking the, the, the risk to go out there and fight. And there are a lot of people who, you know, will come up with a million criticisms of every male organization. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. Oh, these are just, uh, you know, I've, I've heard, uh, oh, someone has blue pilled this, someone's blue pilled that. Um, and a whole load of, uh, oh, yeah, these, these, are, these, aren't, these aren't what I think is the alpha man. And that, like you said, a lot of it is because you don't, we don't need to show everything we're doing. We're not creating a lifestyle yeah. brand. We're not creating a lifestyle brand. We're creating a lifestyle. Yeah. When you look at it, like you, <laughs> they'll, they'll talk smack about whatever you say. I'm like, dude, I, I'm in a stable relationship. I've maintained for decades. I have children who are healthy and respectful. I'm going out there and actually achieving. I'm literally living, you know, the goals I've set in my life. Like I cannot see anything outside of how did you do that? to be presented to me, you know, like I have no care either, you know, if, Oh, FOE, I'm not going to pay for that. I'm not going to pay for friendship. Don't, we don't need you. I'm not, I'm not here to convince you to otherwise, you know, when we were talking about this men need fraternity, find it elsewhere, build it yourself. I don't need to pay for it. Go build it. I'll, I'll tell you exactly how I built this. I will tell you exactly the angles I used. Go build it. Cause men do need it. This isn't, it, it's weird how quickly men get caught up on bringing others down. And when you try to build them up, they're like, well, I don't have a solution. I just wanted to talk shit about you and I wanted to throw a problem your way. Well, why don't you fix something? Well, that's too yeah. much work. Well, that's why you need FOE because we bring you back to work. We put you in gear. Well, that, that's, the, that's the typical um, expressions of gammas. So men that are, you know, they, they don't want to build, they just want to undermine. It's easy to undermine. You just kick sand in people's faces and, you know, you pull out the supports underneath and you, you hack at the roots. You don't grow. You don't create anything yourself because uh, that's actual hard work. Destruction is easy. And there's a lot of men that have been tuned into that. And I, it's really unfortunate. They, they were never put in a position where that was trained out of them uh, because that actually needs to be trained out. It is a tendency of some men. And when you're in a fraternity, you get that trained out of you real quick. If you're a complainer and you're a underminer, you're going to get that taken out of you real fast. The actual alphas in the group will call you on it immediately. And in fact, in a group, you will see that you, you mentioned not many men called you out on uh, one. One man called you out on a habit you had that you, on, on drinking. That's because it's the alphas that call out the men. It's the alphas that say, hey, guys, this is where you need to improve. This is where things need to change. And there aren't many actual alphas. There's very few of those out there. And so there will always be very few men willing to call out other men. And that's a big part of the reason to join an established fraternity, because you know there's some alpha men in that fraternity. There's got to be, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to stay stable. They wouldn't be able to attract 200 men. You can't, you can't create that just overnight on your own. How, how many years did it take you since you started? It's been three or four years now, hasn't it? No, I was going to say, people are always waiting for the, the gotcha moment. Yeah. where they can prove that everything we've been saying has been a facade. And we're at the point, it's been three years. We have fathers and sons in there. And there are now men I've deployed with back in 2007 and 2010 in there. If anybody was going to like blow up the spot or, or, or share like, oh, he's a fake, they, they've had their opportunity <laughs> time and again. I brought people in that before I knew what Reddit was, before I, the family alpha ever existed. I was with these men on a ship floating around the Mediterranean Sea. They... 
and they knew who I was then. The same values I brought here. So when they joined the group, they're like, yeah, he's do that's exactly what he's doing before, except now it's online. So there's no gap here. There's no, but people are so anti-trusting that they're, they're, they still can't even commit to a good thing because they've been lied to so many times. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I can understand that's, that's why you also give a one month, um, uh, an option for people to purchase by the month. And, you know, I do know, I, I know fraternities. I, I know a friend of mine went to join a fraternity in Spain and it's about a thousand years old and it's, um, it's in Barcelona. It's about a thousand years old. It's connected to the Catholic church and they want five grand to interview you. No guarantee you'll get in. That's to do a background check on you and interview you. Oh, and you need like, you know, recommendations from your priest and everything too. Hey. So, yeah. Like they're, they're, you know, getting in, in a younger fraternity is a golden opportunity because it's almost impossible to get into a fraternity that's been established for, you know, five, 10, 15 years. They're very often, even you guys now, you're already getting more and more um, careful and cutting down and, and, you know, being more selective about who you let in. And that goes on for very long. You just don't get in, you know, get in now before you can't get in before, before Zach decides uh, the doors are closed. We've got enough guys. Well, actually Craig and I have spoken about that. We will set a limit and honest, we still are in that, you know, the laying the groundwork mode. We're still, you know, looking to build, we're still looking to make ourselves better. And the men they're getting in now, they're a part of that. But we've already made some changes. You know, you can't get in. Doors open February 16th. And after that, we might go 60 days. You know, we might even push it even further because we, we it's working. And we don't need to add much more to this ecosystem. But we do understand that men need this. So we're looking to give in like an onboarding class. Like, all right, you know, next 10 dudes, come on in. Let's do it. Let's get after it. Let's crush it. You know, but we're already making these changes because it's a solid thing. It's working and now we need to grow it and foster protect it. Yeah, you have a you have a comprehensive immigration strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Figure yeah. it out. I should run for office. Yeah. Yeah, no, it it is it is uh, important because every man you bring into a group changes the group's character fractionally. And you you can you can greatly improve a group by bringing the right men in and you can make it worse by bringing the wrong men in and it's it's the it's, it's the um, property in a way you can say of the members of the group who've all invested into the culture of the group and they want to protect that. They want to protect that network. They want to protect those connections and the value that they're getting out of it. So it's it's natural that as the, one of the leaders of the group, they put that responsibility on you guys to carefully vet who gets into the group. This is an extremely important part of knowing a group is worth joining, is, is knowing that they have that process. It's not Otherwise, it's not worth it if anyone can get in. And so, you know, if you're listening to this and you want to get in, you know, start applying now, even if it's not open now, go and apply now so that you can get on the waiting list so that you can get in when they have openings. And uh, yeah. And in the meantime, you know, listen, sign up to, to Zach's uh, uh, Twitter, you know, follow him on Twitter, follow me as well, and start making yourself the kind of man that Fraternity of Excellence wants to join. Yeah, you can find the link to join Fraternity of Excellence in the in the um, description below this video. There's a special link there. It is an affiliate link from me. And um, I appreciate if you use that link. Go over there and take a look at it and join for a month and see what it's like. You know, I I can see in the future you guys taking that option for monthly away and telling people, hey, you want to commit, you better commit for a year. Now, I can I can imagine that happening at some point. And uh, it's. Yeah, you know, it's it's something that's great. You've got 200 guys now. You're getting close to Dunbar's number. And that's probably what you're thinking about is that that number, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So it's get join now before it's too late. And hey, if you aren't in a position to join Fraternity of Excellence or you want to create your own physical fraternity near you, um, you know, message Zach, talk to him. You know, I know maybe you're going to do courses in the future for people who want to start their own fraternities or a Grum Road course or something like that. I think it's very powerful to take that knowledge of how you structured it and how you recruited and how you vetted men and bringing that to the pe to people because men don't know that anymore. They don't know how to vet friends, let alone vet 200 friends. So it's uh, it's really powerful. And thank you very much for joining me, Zach. It's been a great interview. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time and thank you for having me on. No problem.
And for all those who are listening, go check out the links down below. There's links from my uh, websites as well, as well as from Zach. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching our video, and I hope it inspired you to take action in your life. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video to get more agency building content. The real secret sauce is in our newsletter. Click on the link in the video description below to sign up. I promise I won't flood your inbox and anything that we do send you will be of high value.